Folks, I hope you're all having a good day. So I am taking a look at Amber Lynn Reed's time on social media, starting in the present. I know that she's been on YouTube for forever and a day. So basically she's been on social media for like a really, really long time. For whatever reason, Trisha Paytas' mind is popping up in my head. This might be connected to this YouTube, apo- like a social apocalypse coming up in like three to five years or whatever. I need to take a look at that in a separate video. While I was shuffling and thinking about Amberlynn Reed, the destruction card came out, slowly destroying. So, like I was saying earlier, I understand that she has quite a bit of time on social media. So I'm going to take a look at her time on social media starting in the present. So we're going to take a look at the present leading up to the present. So a little bit of the past and some of the future. Um, I think it's important to like take a look at this now because she is kind of rumbling down the road of weight loss surgery. It appears as of this filming, it's Valentine's Day 2023 this could change tomorrow. Let's keep all of that in mind, okay? But I think it would be interesting to just look at her time on social media. So I'm going to keep shuffling until Spirit tells me to stop, and then I will lay all of my Lettermont cards out. This is called a Grand Tableau. Okay then, while I was laying some stuff out, my attention was caught immediately up to this top row, which is kind of unusual. You can often read letter ma cards just like you would a sentence. In this case, I'm literally seeing a commitment to a cycle to money, public money, social media. What led up to her present situation? She absolutely loves the money that comes from being on social media. Just making sure all my staff is running because, you know, stuff happens, okay? She gets a real kick. You know, this was a fast-moving, that lands on the house of the writer, that was a fast-moving connection that, you know, um, it's like an addiction. I'm literally getting like a gambling kind of addiction in the sense that she immediately liked the attention she immediately liked the money that came from this and that is its own addiction on top of her food addiction in fact i'm just going to say that writer and this is going to be addiction it's not it can be an engagement ring depending on context in this case it's a chain if you will a chain link I see this as being something that she will struggle with for the rest of her life well into the future. Um, Addiction is something that may run in her family, it looks like. So that's about long-term issues in addition to your family tree. This has killed people, I can see in her family. Um, And it's it's also something that she just struggles with long-term. So, now this is interesting. Ryder also appears down here. This is something moving quick. Okay, yeah. So, social media, it is the fastest form of gratification that she can have at this point. Oh my god. That's not an accident. It's a symbiotic relationship with her audience. Her audience loves this. Like, the, like she has this like a small cottage industry around her, right? like all kinds of channels has have sprung up around her to talk about Amber Lynn, right? I think that like even Foodie Booty sprung up because she started talking about Amber Lynn. And yet this is where like, oh God, oh, Jesus. How like you gotta ask sometimes, how does this stuff work? This is kind of crazy. This is endless cycles. Like it's like, like I was saying, it's a symbiotic relationship, but also it's kind of like it's an Ouroboros in the kind of like sense that it just kind of feeds on itself. And this is also going to be the same kind of, it's kind of like foreshadowing the future right now. This is the audience that continually attempts to like force her to reckon with herself. 
And eventually those attempts are going to be successful just because she is out in the public, like people are paying attention to her. So these are the natural consequences of her being out in public. Now I'm going to continue to read up on this top row. We'll get into her heart of the matter in just a second because that is important. So are her cards of fate. With her top row, she loves the money. It's an endless cycle, but also creates a tremendous amount of conflict. And it establishes a burden within herself and within the people around her. And like she's confused often as to how it got to this point. She doesn't think clearly at all. She's a very um, sensation kind of focus kind of person. If it feels good, she chases it, right? But that often means that she self-medicates but doesn't help herself, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Okay, so she might be imitating, like there might be some real conflict behind the scenes. So this might not surprise people. And honestly, people might be perfectly aware of this. Like the public is at a distance, but they might be perfectly aware of how Amberlynn doesn't get along very well with the people that she dates, including the friends that she has for briefs amount of time. And if those friends, you know, value their mental health, it, we've seen them, they leave, right? And it does seem to wound her. Now, it's kind of interesting. I was surprised to see a masculine figure appear or a masculine influence or animus, we'll get into that, appear in her heart of the matter. This is a dramatic male. This could be a drama channel male. For whatever reason, I'm getting rich Lux. I don't know that Rich Lux has ever covered Amberlynn Reed, right? But you know what? Earlier I said, you know, Trisha Paytas popped up into my head. There may be something with the three of them that sometime in the future or sometime in the present, there is some kind of male social media influencer who's taking notice of this kind of stuff. Because do you see this diagonal? So this is a public male, quite literally, somebody who has been a social media figure for quite some time. They tend towards drama and they make it difficult for themselves. They make it difficult for the people around them. He's going to make it difficult for Amber and it's going to be revolutionary for her. It could be that her weight loss surgery, take this with a grain of salt, I could be wrong, right? It could be that her weight loss surgery process like attracts new audience members and those audience members, like you may already watch those like new audience members, like you may be watching this male drama channel, right? Um, I don't know if it's Rich Lux at all because like Rich Lux was a really high vibing person, right? There are just too many coincidences. I hope I y'all guys saw that. So Lily is in the same area. I'm sure that that's important. We'll get into that in just a second. This guy is established in lies. And to be fair, so is she. There are like a number of like, she has a number of misconceptions about the world that continue to swirl around her. And she is firmly established in that. And so it's kind of interesting that she attracts drama channels that might have that kind of um, miasma around them as well. I hope that makes sense. I don't know that I watch this drama channel because, okay, I'll be honest, I do watch the drama channels, okay? I don't know many people that don't. It's kind of my trash TV. Don't at me, okay? <laughs> but when we're talking about the behind the scenes, the conflict that she creates behind the scenes with the people that she dates and the temporary friends that she makes, she has established herself as a bully. This is something that she's been doing for a long time. I'm suspecting that even as an older kid, she was a nasty person. And I see her repeating those cycles well into the future. Like nothing's going to change, basically. If you want to look at this top row and just say past going into the future, nothing's going to change. In fact, it's going to get worse. And that may be what's attracting these. This particular drama channel led by a dude who's not high vi who's not that high vibing, right? I mean, he might not be trying to be that high vibing. 
but people like Rich Lux, Peter Mon, and Adam McIntyre, I'm not explicitly promoting them. Please understand. But I've already read on them, and they're doing some really cool things. They're breaking generational curses, and this guy, I don't see doing that. He is firmly established in lies, and oh, shit. It might not be Deaf Noodles, but his name just popped up into my head. It might be someone like Deaf Noodles, okay? It might be a spiritual successor to be to Deaf Noodles, if you will. Someone who creates extravagant stories just for clicks. And oh, oh, lo and behold, it's all fake, right? That might do something to like really transform the kind of drama that she's already going through right now. Already she's attracting some newer eyes because now there is kind of a turning point in her social media storyline, if you will. Now, it's kind of interesting that she is facing back. Now, she would already, like, because of how these cards are printed, she would be facing backwards anyway. What would be cool, ideal, in the perfect world, Amber Lynn would have both her masculine and her feminine traits in perfect balance with each other. They'd be facing each other. They would be surrounded by security, truth, all that kind of stuff. But I don't see that here. I see her facing the past that she, oh, she's chasing something that she can't have in the past. It might be why she's chasing that childlike kind of feel and it kind of pisses um, the current caretaker. And again, it's Valentine's Day 2023. So whoever the current caretaker was at this time when this was recorded, um, it's definitely causing strain on their relationship because it's like nostalgia or her rose-colored glasses version of nostalgia is where Amberlynn is happiest. And like, yeah, she can't get away from this. It's like she's imagining the early days of YouTube when people were excited to watch, like nobody knew her cycles, right? Nobody knew her addictions or anything like that. See, like, nobody was aware of that just yet. Or those cycles were already there, but the public wasn't aware. This is kind of a surface-level card. They weren't in on it yet. But she was already going through those cycles when she got to YouTube, but you, those that audience wasn't aware of it. So it was kind of a cool period for her where, you know, she got adoration. But, um, you know, the bubble bursts, right? And I see right behind her difficulties surrounding her are difficulties because of the context that she's in, the, this particular social media context that she's in. I'm seeing that she has made a choice. If you want to look at knighting, that is a technique in Letter Ma, I can see that this is a choice that she has consistently made and there is conflict. I cannot make this up. What the fuck? Do you see this? It's in a diagonal. She's committed to conflict for conflict's sake. It feels good. She's imitating something that like mom, grandma, like feminine family members did. It feels good. It feels like coming home. It feels familiar to her. It feels like the warm food and the warm kitchen, that kind of thing to be like hurting people and see like, that's maybe the true addiction right here. Um, she chooses this. Um, she's constantly taking risks. And this is a, okay, we see this running into her cards of fate. This is a long-term risk that she is taking. And we go with the revolutionary again. Appearing on her cards of fate and on her heart of the matter, this is going to transform something about her and it's going to be a permanent transformation when it comes to how she loves people how she chases down love specifically this is having to chase it down like chantal foodie booty has to chase it down so does amber Lynn, amber lynn both of these women have to pay people to be around them for extended periods of time because the people who are mentally healthy leave Becky left. Destiny left. 
This is something that she can't get away from. This is destruction that she can't get away from. This is karmic retribution. She's mistreated a lot of her like genuinely good-hearted partners. I'm getting Becky. I'm getting Destiny. There may be others that I'm not remembering just because like I'm not that deep into the Amber verse, okay? But I'm absolutely like the burden that she creates, the conflicts that she creates, and well-meaning, good-hearted people who want to see her do well, it's like she sees the goodness in people and hates it because she wants the good stuff that comes of being a good person but doesn't want to do the hard work that comes as a result of being a good person. Becky did hard work, for instance, to become the person that she is today. And who she was, honestly, when she met Amber. Um, and so, when Amber attacks that and does her what does what she can to tear that goodness up, it creates a karmic debt that she's going to have to relieve. And I see that in her cards of fate. Jesus. Anchor is a... This is like a really karmic read. I'm just getting like, these are like way too many coincidences ju coincidence just to be coincidences. So, yeah, she is always going to be chasing love. Those are, that's her fate. She is, oh my God, what did I say? She's always going to be paying for love. It's not true love. She wants love more than anything, but she can't have it because she's always gonna have to pay for it. And this drama channel dude is gonna discover some real secrets about her he digs because he is so accustomed to this individual, is so accustomed to lying himself. He's going to be able to ferret out lies a whole lot more easily. There's that more that's night that knighting technique. He's going to be able to ferret out lies in Amber a whole lot more easily than other people would. I keep hoping that this isn't a high vibing sign. I'm saying that like Rich Lux might still cover him because again, Rich Lux's face is appearing in my head. But in no way, shape, or form am I saying that Rich Lux is this guy. But I suspect that Rich Lux might be in on this, possibly in the future. Take this with a grain of salt, okay? Allegedly for entertainment purposes only. He is going to bring in all the con all the conflict that she keeps private. It's going to be like, it's going to like externalize. He's going to like externalize it for her. And it's going to be crazy. Like he's going to be verbally abusive. Like it's not going to be right. But people are still going to rubberneck. They're still going to want to like look at what's going on because what he's saying might get kind of outrageous because he might get kind of ragey. I'm seeing like you might see like him raging, saying some nasty stuff like that a lot of people might not say. And you might see videos of Amber crying and saying this is so hurtful and that kind of thing. And it just, like I was saying earlier, becomes an Ouroboros, like I was saying. Foreshadowing into the future. Yeah, foreshadowing into the future. It just becomes this destructive cycle of, I don't know, the, do, you, do you remember that human centipede? thing a couple of years back. It used to like gross people. I don't know, like what year was that? 2006. I'm so fucking old, dude. Anyway, it, it's just gonna be like a really nasty shit show between these kinds of people. But Amber Lynn, like, please, like, keep in mind, Amber Lynn is on the same wavelength as this guy that's gonna be like talking awful things about her, right? They're on the same vibe length. So it might be tempting to feel bad, but don't spare too much of your sympathy bones on her. Please spare those for the people who actually need it and are trying to make their lives better. She loves this. She gets money out of this. She likes this. That is risk. She loves this. She is, this might be kind of like a karmic contract, if you will, but she is... She might like not know and like just fundamentally not understand life and existence outside of performing for the camera, pissing people off for the camera, and just like being shitty behind the scenes, dude. Like, I don't get necessarily that 
all the people that she dated, all the people that she was temporarily friends with were perfectly good people. But they were trying at the very least. So I took a break just a second to just like, the, like this reading, like <laughs> I've talked about like spiritual maneuver and that kind of thing. This is absolutely one of those kinds of readings that has a whole shitload of spiritual maneuver. We are going to take a look at specifically what spirit draws my eye to. And while I was getting set up again, Cawthon caught my eye. Box selfishness. She is going to chase down what she wants until she is dead and buried, dude. That is going to be her selfish desires will always come first until the day she dies. Or until she leaves social media, which may not be for like for a really long time. Something's going to get exposed, though. Something about her extreme selfishness that she doesn't want to get out there. Oh, Becky's face is coming to mind. So it might be some romantic partners like Becky, for instance, that she's taken advantage of. She doesn't want this shit to come to light, right? She's done her best to bury that kind of stuff. Something's going to be exposed. Someone's going to choose to expose this. This particular drama dude is going to expose this. It's going to make it incredibly difficult for her and for him too, right? It's just going to like... Because, like, some of her fans are going to be piling on, but I don't know how many fans she's got left. It's like she kind of, like, gets rid of them and gets fewer with each cycle. Like, I just feel like people are way more jaded on the internet now. Like, people have just, like, seen it. Like, you've got, like, jaded eight-year-olds these days on, like, Fortnite. Just kind of like, dude, what have you seen, man? This is emotional destruction. Like, really, really kind of, like... Coming from a deep place, what's going to destroy you? Your emotions are going to... Her emotions are going to be incredibly destructive at this point. Let's get into Cloud's heart. She's not... She's not going to have access to self-love. Or not real self-love in any case. Not like the, like the non-self-medicating kind of self-love. But she's going to be like fortified in the worst kind of way possible away from love and she's not going to understand why again like we were saying earlier she's not sure how she got here she's not that deep of a thinker i don't get like again she's more of a sensation seeker and that might be why her emotions are going to be so destructive when these revelations come to light when her true selfishness comes to light i see her being abusive being an abusive liar. There are some lies that she has absolutely told about Becky and possibly about other romantic partners that are deeply destructive to those partners that, that have tried to leave her behind. But because she has so much influence, it's really, really difficult. She's kind of like that bear looming in the background, like, are you, are you going to attack us or something? Because she has so much influence. So once again, you might not like this particular dude who's coming in, but whatever he's going to say is going to cross in with whatever it is that she has said about these partners and it's going to bring about her karmic retribution. And that's kind of the way that the universe and how spirits often work is that they'll use similar vibing people to like work like each other's karmic debts off or to at least start to work them off together, right? Because sometimes high vibing people deserve to be together with high vibing people. Let's just say that. The high vibing people escape Amberlynn's life and they're trying to escape and I don't know what well, they're trying to escape when it comes to the lies that she tells about them. And I don't know how successful that has been or how successful that will be in the future. Because again, this is the these are the future columns. These are the present columns. These are the past columns. So she might be just the kind of person to just 
thrash and just spit stuff out that, again, makes her feel good because she's a sensation seeker and not so much a thinker. Really destructive individual. I'm looking right here. She has invested quite a bit of energy and time. Has done her best to carefully lay plans around hiding how deeply selfish she is. And I know that she does a lot of videos and a lot. I'm like, I, I, is she on TikTok? Um, I know that she does quite a bit of image, like reputation buffering, if you will, because she knows what she's done and said what she's done and said and she knows that it's wrong bear jesus i know you can see that so destructive dude destructive behind the scenes is all about conflict uh she might be a screamer i people have called her an alcoholic she's absolutely the addictions that she's got behind the scenes absolutely are her inner demons and her demons are as destructive to her as they are to other people. Secondhand demon dam damage, if you will. And we talked about this row earlier and how she's just like, once she burdens her romantic partners, they don't recover very easily. Like, Destiny may still be processing some days what Amber did and said to her. There may be still some things that she's getting out, working through, because Amber was that destructive. And absolutely, in the future, if there are any partners, uh, like, unlucky enough to cross Amber's way, partners slash caretakers, unlucky enough to cross Amber's way, it's going to be worse for them, because, again, she doesn't get better with this. She's going to continue to get worse, like I was saying earlier. It's like she wants to she wants to continue to get worse. Stars on stars. She wants this because she knows it makes her famous. And when she has fame, she has money. It's a risk that she takes, obviously, with her weight, but and obvi like obviously her karmic debts. Leaving her weight aside, leaving her physical state aside the karmic debts that she has accumulated by what she has said to other people what she has done to other people is awful enough for her to work off again we've got another diagonal this is an emotional like she loves this an emotional contract a wedding maybe possibly there may be someone unfortunate enough to marry her and she might not love this person so much. She'll want to love them, but like she's like, she loves them as much as a user can. It's like a user supply kind of relationship that she might be in a contract with. She might be getting married. She might not be. You got to take that with a grain of salt, okay? There's something being exposed when it comes to her childish state possibly when it comes to how deeply destructive she is at home like there's no way to call her childlike and innocent when she is this destructive because she's just too aware of what she's doing she's just too accustomed to these patterns and she's possibly like too conniving when it comes to these patterns and again this is in like that snake row so i'm not terribly surprised to I'm kind of see that connection, if you will. She's got some lies. I know we looked at this bear on bear. It's kind of crazy. These aren't coincidence, coincidence, coincidences by any stretch. There's a selfish choice here. I think that this could be like the last one because Spirit's saying that like it's time to like wind it up, okay? There's a, a choice that she made. Like, again, it might like, you can like literally take this to be a scalpel if you want to be like that literal. And she's making it into like a public weight loss journey, my weight loss surgery journey, if you will. It's a decision that isn't in her best interests necessarily, but it is a survival. Oh, Jesus. A more 
and more. More of the scythe. <laughs> more of these uh, just houses and cards landing next to each other or in diagonals. It's crazy with this. I've been, again, I've been playing with like, play, yeah, I've been working with these cards now for a while. And it's just insane. Like, there are no coincidences. It's just like insane how things line up sometimes. Just like a deeply, like, this is a choice that isn't like well thought out. Like, it's a survival choice, but the fox is not intelligent enough to like create a congress, right? Create an economy, start a business, if you will. Like, they're not that intelligent. They're just as intelligent as they are as they're as intelligent as their animal instincts are. They're not necessarily so intelligent as we are. And that's kind of what I'm getting right here. Again, it's that kind of sensation, kind of seeking, kind of feel that isn't necessarily thought-based. It just feels good, so I'm going to go for it. This is a choice that she's going to make. It's kind of a fateful one because it's one made in conflict. Again, I like somebody was saying that wifey... The current wifey, again, at the time of this filming, may have put down an ultimatum. And that's what's leading up to this current situation that's rolling out on into the future. All she does is make things difficult for herself. She chooses this. Love's money. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah, I can see that. What did we say this was? Someone who is chasing social connections makes life difficult for her. Yeah. So the public's going to give her hell for this particular choice that she's going to make. They're going to say, you're not going to be successful. And I wonder if that isn't what's going to attract this particular guy. Like, a lot of people are strongly suspecting that she is not going to be successful with this particular surgery. And that he's going to be there for that. Uh, to be honest, a lot of her audience members, most of her audience members are there because they like to see Amberlynn fail. Because it makes them feel better about herself. It's something, it makes them feel better about themselves. It's something to gawk at. It's something to talk about around the water cooler. Again, it's trash TV. It's just not the Kardashians. It's just not Love Island or whatever have you, right? Um... Yeah. Spirit says that's enough. This was a lot. And unfortunately, it's going to get worse because she's not changing for shit. Like, it's just going to get more dramatic. So we might be doing another Lenormal reading in the future. We may not be. Um, I was <laughs> Spirit kind of held me off from this for a while just because now I know it's because of all the spiritual maneuver associated with this. Y'all have a great day, okay? Take care.